Right, I'm going to do a video on um, pike rods um, for lure fishing. Uh, people are having a bit of um, not too sure what to get. Um, you need to keep in mind that uh, everybody will come to their own conclusion on what 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 they prefer, what what style of rod, what what, what size lures are using. Um, but I'm going to try and just give you a bit of an idea of uh, the pike rods and, and why you might choose that, that rod. Um, you can see I've got I've got quite a few here that. So, some I use, some I don't use, some I've I bought and I don't like, some I've, some I've, I've only a couple that I stick to now pretty much. But, um, uh, first of all you need to decide whether you want a, a fixed bull set up or a um, bait caster multiplier set up. Um, for lighter lows I prefer a fixed bull, um, for heavy lows I prefer uh, a multiplier or bait caster set up. Um, so that's the first thing. A lot of people are a bit wary about using a, a multiplier or a bait caster. Um, they're not always the easiest. Uh, if you don't think you're really skilled or at casting and things like that, then stick to a fixed bow. But if you, you think you're pretty good, you've got a chance, you've got a chance of picking up a, a bait caster. They're not that complicated, and we should have been shown it. I'll probably do a video at some point showing you how to uh, cast a bait, bait caster or a multiplier rod. Really? So when people talk about um, pike rods for low fishing, um, a lot of people start off uh, their pike fishing and they'll use such as um, an old carp rod. They might have a carp rod and think that's suitable for pike fishing. So they've got this big bulky carp rod, uh, put a fixed spool rod on it, probably 20 pound mono or something like that. And then we try casting uh, a tiny spinner. Um, and that that's one of the big problems. Uh, and that is basically a great example of an unbalanced setup. Um, you could use a carp rod if you needed if you were short of money. But you'd, you would be looking at throwing big lows, big pike lows, yeah, and that's the thing with um, pike fishing. When people talk to talk about pike fishing with lows, uh, you need to realise that um, whilst a small meps or a tiny capito will catch you uh, pike, if you're going fishing for pike, you need to use big lows. Simple as that. So. Uh, big lures are always the most fun to use, it can be tiring, uh, it might not be enjoyable, so there's various versions, I've got a, a lot lighter versions that I use for, for throwing smaller plugs and plastics about. So, um, But your ultralight setup, although some of my videos see me catching quite a few pike, your, my ultralight set, setup isn't what I'd go out chasing pike with. Right, so let's have a quick look at that ultralight setup. Seen it a million times, um, the Grey's G light. Um, Really soft, bendy. I mean that. That is not for pike. A, a, a two pound jack, two pound perch, two pound chub is going to give you a massive bend in your rod. If you can see it on this video or not, but it bends like mad. So that's not for pike. Uh, it's a low. That's pretty much it, about the size of those you want to use on it, and smaller. And it's. I've not. It's not really ultra light. Ultra light is um, tiny lows, one centimeter. So you could go even smaller than this, and not to a five gram, for example. This is three to fifteen gram. So it gives me a chance of pike chub. Um, if I did go trout fishing, I would use the same rod, just because, it, despite having all these lot rods, I'm not that tarty and I don't have too many setups. So, but you could go even smaller. But that's that's my ultralight setup. So that's not for pike. If you catch a pike on it, it's good fun. Um, if you catch a double on it, it'll handle it, but it's a bit scary. And ideally, if you're targeting pike, you don't use a rod like that. I've got another rod here. This one is a, an Abu, Abu Revenge. And this casting weight on this one is 5 to 20. So, for me, that's not quite ultralight. That's not quite copper toes and things, because it's a little bit too big. Uh, basically, if you're catching 5 ounce perch, um, it's a little bit stiffer, a little bit less feel in the rod. So, it's not as much fun for perch. Um, if you're catching two and three pound perch quite often, it might not be too bad, I think you can do slightly bigger those, but we'll see on this rod. It's a little bit stiffer. And I actually, um, actually like, it's quite good for kids, this, this type of rod, it's a little bit stiffer. Not good that they can't feel as much, but it's a little bit stiffer, it means that if they drop it, it's not going to break straight away. Um, so it's a slightly better rod. Um, and you'd use, you'd use this rod for slightly bigger soft plastics. You could get away with something like a low that side, that kind of stuck it in my leg. To get away with a little of that kind of size, mark out and mark out and uh, slide and shad. Great little low, it's not too heavy and this rod will cast it perfect and, and you're not going too big. Um, this this rod will handle the pike 
a jack pipe really well. But again, uh, I mean, this, this rod's only um, five foot six, so it's not really a pike rod. But it'd be great for fishing small, uh, small canals or little ponds that's full of jack pike, that kind of thing, where you know you're going to catch a lot of jacks, and it's a good, a good bit of fun. So you could use that kind of setup. Um, it's match it with something like a 2,500 reel. On this one at the minute, I've got a um, an Akuma HX40, which I, I would swap this reel and use it on various rods. So I don't have too many reels and setups. So this rod will also be used on a couple of setups. But sorry, this reel will be used on a couple of setups. So that's the kind of thing you need to be thinking about: is what you're going to be using rods and reels for. Can you use the same ones for multiple ones, or do you need to buy one for everything? So uh, great little setup. Good little, another, another fun rod. It, it bends on jacks. Uh, it'll handle a bigger pike a lot better, but it's still, again, it's not a pike rod. Okay, so I, so if I'm going um, pike fishing, uh, I either use my really heavy setup or my lighter pike setup. So my light pike setup is a Savage Gear Butch Light, six foot nine. And it's actually rated ten to thirty grams, so it's not much more than my uh, five to twenty or whatever my light, my really light rod. But this actual rod is a lot better, um, more, better designed for bike. It's stiffer, but it's, it's still got a, a bit of a soft, um, soft end to it. One second. And I actually use it with a, a small Shimano K9. It's a bait caster reel, and, it, and it's good fun. It's quite soft on the top. See that? It's got a bit of bend in it, but it's great fun for uh, jack pike uh, and throwing these. This size again, mark out and cranks. Uh, I'll get some more of those in one second. Right, so you'll see here a typical um, type of load I'll be throwing on it. Uh, mark out and cranking shad. Sorry, mark out and sliding shad. Slightly bigger sliding shad, great loads. Um, Deeper diving cranks, Savage Gear soft four play, 13 centimetre version. Uh, perfect loads for this. Savage Gear. Savage Gear four play, 13 centimetre. Swim and jerk, Ripple. You can see you're all pretty much the size of your hand, a little bit shorter than your hand. 10, 11, 12, 15 centimetre. And even, even a squirrel of jake, it's pretty light load, even though it's quite a decent size. It's 9 inch with a tail. But um, it's great for me, you cast it really well on these small, this lighter rod. Yeah, and it'll give you much more fun. But like I say, we're talking about pike now. Um, where I might, I might, I might go fishing with a, with a my Grays 3 to 15 or my Abu 5 to 20. I might fish for bike. Uh, I'm fishing places where I know it's just absolutely jam packed with jack bike. And when I say jack bike, I mean this size. So there's no point going with a big rod. Yeah, so if you fish, if your places you fish are full of uh, tiny pike, then fair enough. But the, the lightest pike setup I've got is a 10 to 30. Now you might want, you could look for a, a similar 10 to 40, 10 to 50. Uh, I'd say 10 to 40, that's probably about as, as big as you want to go. Uh, and use those kind of loads. I forgot to show you the the big hammers and things like that. Uh, I think they're, what, they're five inch, five inch soft plastics. Same as your, as your 13 centimetre Savage Gears. Uh, and this is good fun. Uh, it'll handle pike. And it is designed by Savage Gear as a pike rod. It is a, it is a, a predator rod. Uh, with a bait caster. Uh, you'll find it's a lot more, uh, a lot of fun. Uh, you can cast it pretty well, get some good distance on it, and you can still use it with. Um, I think this has got, I think this has got um, 30 pound braid on it. Um, but if I thought I were fishing somewhere snaggy, I'd you'd switch to another reel that's got 40 or 50 pound braid on it. But most of his time, I'm fishing shallow, um, shallow canals, and the worst I'm going to hook up um, is probably a bulrush or something. So I can get it back to 30 pound braid. I can pull it out of there. So a bit of a, um, a step up, uh, classes of medium lows, and this is a um, Grace Prowler GS jerkbait rod, uh, and it is rated at 
it's six foot three and it's rated to eight, up to 80 grams. So it should throw that kind of low. Uh, it, should, it should throw plenty of um, jerk baits, such as another Mark Outen jerk bait. Um, however, I find it a little bit soft. Um, I find it a little bit soft on the tip. And I don't always feel the hook set. So I wouldn't go much bigger than, um, than 40 or 50 grams on this, this particular rod. Just, just this, this make. Um, it, it feels a little bit soft and if I go bigger I tend to miss for example, I might put a squirrely boat on, often quite big hooks on them, um, and it, even though it does cast it, it's probably its limit, and, if, and I tend to miss quite a lot of fish, and I feel it's because um, because it's softer, I'm not setting the hooks, uh, and that's where a bigger, heavier jerkbait rod comes in, so it's getting your, your rods to sue. So I find I don't use this setup much. much um, I've got a um, gun with Calera on it. Again, I've only got light braid on it, 40 or 50 pound on this one. Um, it's, it's perfectly balanced, lovely, lovely setup to use, just a little bit soft on there. So, uh, if I could find uh, some jerks, maybe 40, 40, 40 grams, I don't know, four or five inch long, uh, it might be fun to use on it. But at the moment, it's kind of an in between setup, I don't, I don't really personally use. Um, however, if you can find a nice rod at up to 80 grams, 80 grams, that's got a little bit of a backbone to it, and you, and you pair it up with something like that, or, or any, any nice bait castle like that, that is the kind of um, setup that most people would want to go to. Because most people are, aren't using big lows, and the biggest that you might use is, is, a, is a 19 centimetre four play. So ideally, you want to have, um, say, let's say 50, 60 pound braid on, uh, similar 60 pound trace. Fishing these four players, uh, smaller jerk baits, not too big. Most of my jerk baits are, 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 are not not huge, but they're, they're six inch plus. Um, a lot of my lows are six inch plus, and they don't they don't really don't really cut it for me. This rod, so I'd look to I'd look for a, a stiffer rod in that rain, rain. So then we get on to um, what is probably probably less known by. Uh, newcomers, but obviously known by the pike anglers, is a proper dedicated pike setup. Um, most people who are targeting pike um, seriously would have to bigger fish, they're using big lows. Um, big savage gear eels. Um, you let your 3D line filter out. Replicants, I mean, serious size lows um, for pike. When you compare it to the little soft plastics, um, big jerk by Craig Beverly. Uh, it's got a lot of weight to it, um, so you need a bit of backbone. The 80 gram rod um, wouldn't cast that. We also have got people ask me what rod for a squirrely bait. I mean, that's pushing pushing 100 grams. Is that rod? Uh, sorry, is that low? Especially when it's weighted, so you need the quite big hooks. So you need that um, bit of backbone in your rod to set those hooks. Some people struggle with the multipliers and bait casters, and they start off using the, the cap set up, or they might use um, something like this, which is what I used to use years ago. And it's um, it's a Savage Gear rod. And this one is rated uh, 30 to 90 grams. Now you can wear this rod to, let's think, let's have a look. This one here. That's 20 to 60 agitator, and that's the uh, 30 to 90 Savage Gear. Um, much bigger rod, I think that's an 8 foot rod, is a Savage Gear, uh, and that is much more I ideally suited than the, than the Witchwood agitator low. Which is nowhere near suited that. So that's where that's where I get a bit puzzled with manufacturers where they just get it so, totally wrong. I mean, we, we the consumer are not always not always that clued up on and know what we're doing. You buy a rod like that and then you expect it to be something and it's nowhere near it. But you've got a fixed spool reel on it. Yeah, I actually just got an old bait run on this at the moment because I'm not really I don't I don't use it. But um, at least a four thousand size reel, but probably something a little bit bigger um, because you'd be wanting to use. 
60 plus, uh, 60 pound bread plus to get your big loads back. Um, but it's a lot stronger, a lot, sti a lot stiffer rod, and it'll cast you those big um, rear eels, four plays. Um, it would cast you those squealy baits. Um, but I'll come back to that in a bit. It's not suited for things like squirrely baits and jerk baits, but you can get away with it, but it's not, not suited for it. Uh, but good for um, big swim baits, things like that. Um, some, some people you might find have got um, a dedicated uh, jerk bait set up, and this, but they still might use a fixed spool for the swim baits, uh, big big soft plastics like the six, seven inch, eight inch soft plastics, or the big eels that's 30 and 40 centimetres. Because uh, this is a, Nice and steady retrieve. There's not much, not much action to your rod. Uh, you, you can maybe just lift it up and lower it down every now and again, but you're not really jerking it, twitching it, and things like that. So, a lot of people will be looking at something like this, uh, and it is, it is a good rod. I mean, I've done, done big pike on there, done 20 pound pike on that. It handles it perfect, uh, and you, you know with such a savage gear, they're looking at. Um, they're into predators and that's what they're looking at so you know if you're getting something like rod that's rated 30 to 90 it should be thereabouts um what you're after so i would stick to somewhere somebody like that who's a proper predator manufacturer um, but what you find with this rod uh, is it's no good for no good for jerk baits um, a lot of fun for me is, is fishing it's not just catching pike uh, it's catching pike on loads that i like to use uh, jerk baits are a lot more fun Oh, that sort of that sort of low. Um, so this is an eight foot rod and it's a big cumbersome rod. So let me explain the reasons why, right? You've got an eight foot rod um, and you're trying to work a, a jerk bait like this. And the idea of a jerk bait is not just to wind it in straight towards you. You basically you twitch the rod, you twitch your rod tip, point it down to the water, and you twitch it, and then what happens is this, this jerk goes sideways. And when you tap it again, it turns and goes that way. And then you tap it again, and it goes that way. And you're working it, and it might only move a couple of feet in three or four taps. Maybe even if you get it right, it'll just keep working like that constantly. Now, with an eight foot rod and all that tapping, all you're going to keep doing with your eight foot rod is tapping the floor, tapping the water, because it's too, unless you're a really tall person, which I doubt most of you are. Um, so, what you have is a shorter jerk bait rod. So this, this rod's six foot. So, so when I'm stood up uh, and I'm tapping, basically the rod tip's not tapping the not tapping the water, not tapping the floor, uh, and that's that's where a jerk bait rod will differ to a, a fixed spool rod. Um, that's pretty much sum, summary in summary, basically, just to show you, just to give you an idea of, of why you have a, uh, a you don't have an eight or nine foot long low rod. You only have a, some people five foot six, six foot six foot six rods. Uh, you might want a seven foot if you're on a boat because you're a little bit higher up. Um, but that's pretty much the reason why. So we'll have a look at the, at the, at the bigger jerk bait rod. Uh, this is pretty much my uh, rod of choice at the moment. It's sort of my setup of a choice at the moment. It's a pretty new reel to me, so I can't give you too much information on it. The Kuma Komodo 350. But um, a lovely reel to use. Uh, whether it, whether it lasts, I don't know. A lot of a lot of bait casters, cheap bait casters, struggle. This is maybe a, a mid-range bait caster, um, and hopefully it'll it'll last a little bit longer than some of the other reels. But um, come to the cast 80 pound braid, uh, and my jerk bait rod that's gone with it is is an actual it's a, it's a Polish uh, rod. Um, some say I look a little bit Polish, um, but that's not the reason I bought it. Uh, I bought it because it's quite a small blank on it, quite a thin blank. My hand, hand fits nice and comfortable around it. Uh, it's pretty light. It's rated 150 gram, so it should it throws that. Craig, um, I, I don't know how much it is actually. That's probably 130, I guess. 40, not uh, I mean, it, it, But it struggles to get distance with it. And I'd, I'd rate this rod a little bit less than 150 gram lows. 250 gram lows are your. Big Savage Gear real eels with a big jig head on from. Big soft plastics. I don't know what one of those is, 80 or 90, I think. I'm not sure. I always forget everything. Anyway, it feels a little bit uh, a little bit soft for them. But, but the casting, casting my cobs, jerk bait, casting my squirrely bait. Um, 
Another yeah. lovely load here. You notice know, I like the custom made jerk baits. This one's right, this one's by Matt Holmes. Makes lovely loads. Um, awesome little, little design on them. Perfect. Great quality and great little loads. And they're what's fun to use. So on this rod, rate 150. Most loads are, um, are 60, 70, 80 grams. Um, and a little touch more on it. And it's comfortable like that. Uh, and it's, it's obviously strong enough for a pike. It's quite a, it's quite a stiff rod. Enjoy you. Quite a stiff rod. Um, even though it's a, it's a quite a stiff rod, it's not at the um, the top range. You'll find some people are cut a chucking 200 gram loads plus now. Most most anglers won't look at anything like that, so don't even look at that unless you're really fishing big reservoirs, probably off a boat, so easier, big soft plastics off a boat, and then you look at a, a, a rod that big. I have got another rod that's 150 grams, in fact it's 40 to 120, but it's shorter, it's quite a thicker blank if you compare it to supposedly 150 gram. You can see why I bought it, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot slimmer blank, a lot easier on my hands, a lot, a lot easier to hold. But even though this rod's rated 220, this, this is a Gray's, Gray's Prodigy, uh, Gray, how do say it? This is a Gray's Prodigy jerkbait rod, uh, 40 to 120. Uh, it is pretty stiff, it is very, it is, it, very capable of handling that sort of, that, that sort of load, it's pretty cheap. Um, I'm not really sure I got a second hand, but it was pretty cheap. And, uh, and that's the kind of rod you want to be looking at to start off with. Uh, say it was probably like an ABO Ambassador 6501C3, uh, and it's a, it's a great, great setup to use. But you'll, you'll notice on that uh, the multiplier, your thumb's quite high. And that's the reason I made a switch to a, a lower profile bait caster, just a little bit more comfortable. I, I tend to do a lot of jerk baiting um, on my piking on, on through winter. And it's a lot more comfortable to use that. So I've listened to my advice, uh, my words, whatever. But um, just have a little think how how that uh, is relevant to yourself. Uh, keep in mind that what I might find as a great setup, somebody else will find as a as a poor setup. And you might you might be unlucky that you, you choose a rod and a real combination that you're just not suited to. It's not suited to what you want, what you like or like you say that. That rod that you buy that says it's rated at one thing and, it, and it's not a reel that's not quite up to it, uh, and that's part of that's part of it. Unfortunately, um, unless you buy, unless you get out with somebody who's got the gear, you have a go with it and you love it and you buy the exact same thing. But if you buy it yourself, be prepared to get it wrong uh, or do a lot of homework before you get it right. Um, but have a look round. Uh, be wary of reviews because, like I say, I might say a rod's really rubbish. Write a review, put it up on the internet, and somebody else thinks it's fantastic. So you've always got to keep that in mind. Um, sometimes you, those reviews are from people who are not that experienced, so it's basing it on something that we don't know much about. So you've got to be wary of it. No day, have a look at it. Um, if it's in your price range, if it sounds like it's suitable, uh, then just go for it. And all you can do is buy it and sell it on if it's not right. And buy something else. But, uh, when you're buying a rod, don't forget to watch out for. Um, whether it's, it's for the fixed spool or a, or a multiplier. Um, but, don't, but it's not always obvious because they tend to think that everybody who buys a, a low rod knows what they're looking for. But one little tip to look out for on a on a multiplier rod is this little trigger grip here. You'll see on a, on a standard fixed spool like that, you haven't got anything, you've got no little thumb grip. So that's one little thing that'll give you a little, little tip. So sometimes you can spot that on the, on the, on the website. Um, and it's that thumb grip, but basically, when you hold a rod, it's a bit of a grip because you, because you've got your thumb there on top. That, that trigger grip gives you a bit of a help because you will you will have a fish pull it, and that that stops it sliding out your hand. So that's one thing to look for. That'll help you. So don't buy a uh, a, a low rod like that if you've um, if you're using a fixed pull, for example. Um, I, sometimes I word it as a, it's it's classed as a casting a casting rod. So that's one thing to look out. Uh, but it's not always easy. So personally, I, I'd, I'd suggest for a lot of a lot of um, a lot of anglers, a lot of new load anglers, that you're using lures 
in that kind of range size. Um, that's going to give you a chance of a big fish or a small fish. It's going to give you a chance of more fish. 13 centimetre four play size. If you're if you're most of your lures are that size, then you're looking for something like this um, this Savage Gear, which is 10 to 30 gram. I think I think these are what are the 20 something 27 grams something like that. So it's well in that range, uh, and that's what I'd look to I'd look to buy. Um, don't go out buying massive lures to start with. I'd suggest getting something like that. It's good fun. Um, go out, explore your waters, your canals, your rivers, wherever, your, your, your little ponds, and have fun and find out what fish you catch. Don't go thinking I want to catch a 20 pound pike straight away. Uh, it does happen, it's nice when it happens, but um, get something like that. Get out, have some fun, get used to your bait caster, if that's what you get, um, and enjoy it. And if you find that you've gone to a few places and you catch, um, you catch quite a few doubles, uh, there's a good chance that there's something a little bit bigger in there. So then you might want to start upping your lows and getting something even bigger uh, and going for your, your big big jerk baits, your big real eels, four players, uh, and all sorts of uh, big bulldogs and everything else that there is out there. And that's when you want to go and buy a big big setup. Like I said, mine's not mine's not at the top top end of the scale. Uh, it's only roughly 100 gram lows you, you chuck in. But that's that's still fun. Um, it probably rules out some of the tiny jacks because for a little bit. Um, put off by big lows, not always. You do you do sometimes get a, a pike that's no much not much more bigger than than, than that bait. Uh, you, st you still sometimes get get small pike on big lows, but often they're quite they're quite put off by lows like this. Um, so you rule out more fish, and you might have you might by using a smaller setup, and a smaller lure, you'll catch more fish in the day, but you might not catch the big one. Um, keep in mind that a big fish wants a big lure, and that's why we use big lows. And the reason for, me, for people not catching big fish most of the time uh, is because you're using small lures. Like I say, it does happen, you do catch big fish, but big rods, big lures, and away you go. Um, I hope all that helps, I hope I haven't sounded a bit, it made it more confusing, but uh, basically what you need to do is just take the plunge. Uh, it's so easy to look online now and look at so many rods, so many ratings, so many opinions of people. Uh, if you go on Facebook, on, on, a, on a low, low forum or something or a pike forum, what rod shall I use, uh, what low shall I use, straight away you've got 50 different people all suggesting different things uh, and it's not easy to, to listen, you need to just get one, one person uh, or a couple of people, uh, ideally get out with them and have a look at what they're using and why they're using it, but um, just get one person and listen to him, as long as you, if you know they're catching fish, um, listen to them uh, and stick with it. And, if you've got a decent suggestion, go with it. If you see if you see a bargain deal on the internet and it looks okay, it sounds okay for the rods and reels, uh, for the loads that you're going to use, then then go for it. Just take the plunge. Uh, you learn by your mistakes. You learn by buying wrong things. I've got rods that I don't use because I bought the wrong thing. I've got reels that are a waste of time. I've got rods that are a waste of time. I've got loads that are rubbish just because you get it wrong sometimes. Um, yeah, and I'd, that's it. Have fun. Go for it.